everybody. It's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship, checking in team number 3357, Comets. Comets have two wins so far as we're recording this this season. Of course, looking for another one here at MSC. Comets have been building great robots every year. They're the Lamborghini of Tank Drive, and you got to check out what's gone in this robot here. Of course, we're talking about their decision to continue with Tank as well, but take a look at the elegance of this robot. Just able to cycle so quick. Comets very consistent. We'll talk more about all that. So the programming has gone to it. Coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. If you're attending championships, come to the Fun and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the Fun and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the Fun or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Ben, let's start off on your robot here. Uh, you know, comments says uh, continue to go out tank drive, and you're a top-tier robot out there as well, too, so I'd love to hear about uh, what has gone into that? We'll showcase a little bit of props in the last two, and then uh, a little bit about your intake design also. Yeah, so a lot of teams asked us why we went with Tank this year. Um, we're West Coast Drive, like always, so the, the middle wheel is actually a little lower than the other two. The way we did that this year, um, last year we actually had 3D printed treads. This year we're going with um, this like black nitrile, it's kind of like conveyor belt tread. Um, we actually have a custom machine center billet wheel, just a big chunk of aluminum, um, and that gives us super robust uh, West Coast drivetrain. And also, like last year, we have our dropout drivetrain modules. So the entire, we have two rails, one on each side, um, three rails on each side, and then the entire rail drops out with literally two bolts on each side. And can you show those? There's two right there, and then two on the other side, and then four wires, um, two for each kneel. And the entire thing drops at the bottom, and we can swap a rail in about, I think it's like five minutes, five, six minutes. Um, so even if we break, we can just swap it real quick and uh, get it working. And then um, something else interesting about our robot, it's kind of our, we didn't focus entirely on going for the single substation or double substation initially. We actually went for floor. So one of our intake mentalities, a lot of teams focused on tipped cones this year because it was like, okay, well, you're going to have a cone. Can I have that cone, Sean? You can have a cone vertical on its side towards you, you know, a bunch of different orientations. But the idea we went with is we want to have a really simple design that can do all of those kind of at once. Um, we ended up coming up with what we call our bull bar. What it is, essentially, um, it's just a bar that actuates via a linear um, extension mechanism, just kind of straight out. Um, we actually had just a top roller on top of it. Um, originally, it was just the bar, but the idea is what you can have is, can I have that cone again, Sean? You can extend this bar out and tip the bar up, or run to the, the cone and tip the flange up um, using the bar. But you can also use that top roller as a normal intake for cubes. Because cubes are essentially just like a ball. You can actually just run the roller over it and then take it into our end effector. When you, you mentioned from game strategy wise, you really wanted to focus on the floor. Why did you feel that was the most important thing for Comets? We somewhat overestimated how many game pieces were going to be on the floor. I think a lot of teams actually kind of realized that the single sub and double sub are kind of your strategy. Um, we went more for floor because we overestimated how many game pieces, but it actually makes us really useful for Auton and cleaning up that center area when no one else is going for it. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, the, I think a lot of the battle is going to be an autonomous uh, or right after autonomous, right, and what's left uh, for things. So it's so cool to see with Comets as well. Uh, let's continue going with Aiden talking about the uh, arm and the end effector and I'd love to see some of it uh, displayed and demoed as well too. It'd be really cool Aiden. Yep so this is our arm right here and then this is the end effector. Um, end effector is just two rollers driven by a Neo 550 back here um, and then it's turned side or they spin the opposite direction with these onyx gears right here. Um, as Ben explained it kind of works hand in hand with our bull bar um, but it's also unique in that we can come up to the single substation and we extend it a little bit, and then Hendrik, our human player, can just drop the cone straight in, um, or we'll intake cubes off the ground, and then we'll show a demonstration here. So this is going to be our ground cone. Pretty simple. And then this will be ground cube. There we go. And then one also side note here, um, just now for Michigan State, um, Michigan State Championships, we found a new strategy. We are doing upright cones from the single substation. Um, there's our upright cone. And we found that is much faster than driving up to the single substation. 
So Alex, you're going to be talking about some more of the electronics integration as well, too. So uh, talk to me about what's gone into it. I know we're going to show off a little bit of, of a modification on your board as well, too. So talk to me what's uh, shown on screen right now. Yeah, so what we noticed last year when we were using a one of the products from Swift, their uh, Swift daughter board, is that it had a few key electrical um, weaknesses that we wanted to try and mitigate. Um, so one of those was that all of the power and ground for all of your DIO and your PWM things are tied together. So what we did instead is we tied power directly to each port so that they were able to, if one failed, it didn't kill the rest of them. And we also have a full ground plane. Uh, so doing a custom circuit board like that has made that portion of how we use sensors much more reliable. Um, and then more on top of the topic of sensors, this year we're using a lot more sensors than we usually do. Um, our electronics are actually quite a bit more advanced. So on our end effector, uh, we obviously we have these, we have these uh, IR beam brake sensors. And what that allows us to do is with the code integration, if we have a cube, we know it's a cube, and if we have a cone, we have a cone. So Ben, who when he's driving as operator, knows when he presses the high button, it'll go to either cube or cone, because the robot knows what it has. Um, and the way we're doing that, most a lot of our wires do go down the arm, but sensors don't. So the way we're actually running sensors this year is using the absolute encoder and alternate encoder daughter boards for spark maxes that allow you to run your PWM and your other simple sensors off of those boards. So all our sensor values are going through the CAN line, and it not only makes our code faster, it also makes it more reliable, So because we aren't, we aren't running long sensor wires all the way down the robot. As we continue on this robot, let's talk a little bit more about programming and what's gone into it from uh, that end as well, too. So, uh, so Hendrik, we're going to start with you, uh, talk more about what's, uh, what's gone into it with your auto retract, and I know we're going to Sean as well, too, talk, uh, kind of finish up on the cool programming on your Yeah, bot. so our auto retract takes in the um, values of the, um, the beam brakes. So when we're intaking, we can detect if we have a game piece in our end effector based on the, uh, the beam brake values, and then we can auto retract. So we have auto retract for every single intake. Once the beam brake detects that the game piece has come out of the end effector, it'll come back down, and we can drive off and go get another game piece. <clears throat> uh, Sean, I'd love to hear more about the uh, state machines and uh, the rest of your autonomous package and what you're doing during auto. And uh, have you done any improvements uh, looking into uh, MSC or even beyond potential? Yep, for sure. So as Alex briefly mentioned earlier, uh, we use our beam brakes to kind of detect what game piece we have within the robot. This then allows us to uh, alternate our functionality through our entire robot. So these two beam brakes are almost the bread and butter of our code this year. Um, so based off if we have a cone or a cube, we actually actuate our arm, wrist, and elevator to different positions. So we have the most ideal um, placement position for each game piece. Um, on top of that, uh, within each subsystem, if you want to come in here, we have absolute encoders all over our robot. We have one here, we have one up here for our uh, elbow, we have one for our elevator, and we have one for our bull bar. That allows us to kind of run uh, simulated state machines within each of our subsystems so that if, one of, if our absolute encoder fails, we can kind of pivot back to our relative encoder. Um, the reason why we chose to add this many sensors is because you know, we've had reliability issues in the past, and we wanted to make sure we could be as reliable as possible this year. Um, moving on to our kind of our autonomous package, uh, for MSC we actually uh, got our um, odometry resetting uh, working using a Limelight 3 if we want to pivot robot around guys. Um, so using a Limelight 3 we see the April tags around on the field and then we reset our odometry. What this has enabled us to do is we actually have more reliable um, autons going over the charge station so we can actually place a game piece, go over the charge station, grab one and then come back and balance a lot quicker because we know our exact position on the field and then it also has allowed us to get a three game piece over the bump. Are you uh, also resetting your IntelliOp right now, or is it just an autonomous thing? Uh, we just do it in autonomous because we try to attack our code in the way of, if we don't need something, let's not run it. So we don't we don't reset our odometry in IntelliOp. Fair enough. Well, Comets, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your team and your robot. You're looking phenomenal, and we can't wait to see how you do here at MSC, and uh, hopefully Bond as well, too. Thanks a lot, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information.
FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.